All right, welcome everybody to another edition of Bourbon Banter Evans. And today, I think, what are we going to be talking about, Justin? Hey, a fun and exciting, very sought after, very anticipated, I would say, topic. One that I think everybody's waiting for. I'm going to say allocated and rare bourbons, specifically bourbons. That's yeah. what we're going to concentrate on because this is Bourbon Banter Evans. Exactly. So if we had to sit there and say what actually is allocation, what is allocation? I'm glad you asked that. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and have a pour of an allocated bourbon. 1792 small batch. So everybody wants to know what's allocated or how an allocation works or where it comes from and all that and don't realize how many brands are actually allocated. Yeah. There's actually a bunch of brands that are allocated. And so 1792 is one of our favorites. We've done several store picks. Yes, we have. He's been involved in many store picks. And so you want to join in on a I'd love to. Let's banter and have some 1792. This is an allocated brand, so let's enjoy an allocated exactly. bourbon. Exactly. Matter of fact, I'm going to pour it up with how I prefer it. I'm going to go with two small ice cubes. All right. And I'll do the same thing. Pour about that much worth in my matching 1792 glass. And trust me when I tell you this, when I decided to do this allocated brand for tonight, I went all out. So I'd matched up my glass with it and I'm wearing 1792 socks. Trust me, can you verify that? Yes, yes, he does have the 1792 socks on. What's crazy to me is how many people actually out there actually think 1792 is an allocated bourbon. It, it's crazy to think that because it was one that you could get everywhere all the time. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't realize it is allocated. And so, so back to your question, what is allocated? Allocated literally means it's you're allotted a certain amount of an item at any given drop or a delivery. So you can only get X amount per maybe month or quarter or year or whatever. So you do see 1792 just about everywhere because it is a brand that certain suppliers and everything definitely want to be seen in your store. It is a good brand. We like to drink it on the regular. And that being said, we are allotted a certain amount per every delivery. And so we can't get as much as we used to be able to get at all will. And keep in mind, just for the record, this is not an uncut, unfiltered whiskey, but this video is uncut, yes. unfiltered. We will, keep, we will stick to that theme, and thank you guys for joining in. Yep, appreciate it. Enjoy a pour with us. So cheers to our cheers. allocated item. Yes, indeed. And guys, by the way, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button down on the bottom so you can see when we're dropping new videos. It's just a really good go-to. It's a go-to bourbon for me. It's one that I always try to keep, at, you know, here in a decanter or here in a bottle for that matter. Uh, just brought this one. It's a fresh crack of an allocated bottle. Don't forget, we just allocated and rare. Right. We'll see, this is not a rare bourbon. But mention that I just said fresh crack. I think it tastes completely fine. It does. And I said in a pr prior video that I would debunk eventually that stupid, what I call stupid, neck pour. <laughs> idea of what something is in a neck pour in a, in a bourbon which is you know easily avoided and I did this off camera before we started doing anything to completely not have to worry about that yeah all I did was this so am I drinking the butt pour is, no. the, is the butt pour a thing you're drinking everything I'm drinking everything so yeah. therefore it's a fresh crack and I like that term I don't like neck pour not that I'm saying I'm right or wrong or anybody else if you like neck pour neck pour all the day but we no. we fresh crack no it's good I mean you can't it's a great, just, it's a great drinker. That's what I, that's what I call it. It's a great yeah. drinker. And it just so happens to be allocated. Yeah. And, and so it, it's amazing how many brands are out there that are allocated. I've been dealing with it for a long time, many, many years. So just your, a lot of your everyday stuff that you see on the shelf is actually allocated. In 1792, we chose this as an example because you see it everywhere, but believe it or not, they do limit how much we can purchase. Now, years ago, it was unlimited. We could buy all we want. So a lot of people automatically think, you know, okay, what's allocated? Just off the top of your head, Eagle Rare. Yeah. Taylor. Taylor, definitely. Taylor. Blanton's. Yes. Weller's. Buffalo Trace, Buffalo things Trace. like that. Well, they're sister companies. Sazerac owns a lot of those. Right. Heaven Hill produces a lot of allocated brands too. Yep. Elijah Craig. Elijah Craig, yes. Yeah, Elijah Craig's one. Uh, Old Fitzgerald. Right. That's definitely allocated. And, and so they kind of forget that it's, it's not the harder to find allocation ones, but there's a lot of regular brands that are on the shelf that are limited to the amount you can purchase. And as things are changing with uh, the times, the way the times are with um, virus stuff from a year ago, there's a lot of allocated items before because you can't put the liquid in the glass. So therefore there's a shortage right. and you have to allocate it based off of what it is. Um, this is not a bourbon, so I'm not going to mention it. <laughs> Understand what you're saying. There is other brands that are allocated. There's, yes. there's even vodka that's allocated. Yeah, there, you know, yeah. It's crazy. So now I, another question I have for you. So 
allocation based on other brands to sell. So is there really, I mean, how, how does that work out? So that's a lot of... There, there's, Behind the scenes? Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's questions that I, I can answer the best of my ability. I will do that. There, there's 100% certain times that there are um, what they're going to call a... What's the best wording for this? It is an incentive. Yeah. Incentive. It's incentive. It'd be incentive. So technically, you can't strong arm sell in the state of Georgia. No. Yeah. But so that everybody knows that. That's not like I'm leaking anything, but it's incentivized selling. If you purchase these items that are supporting our portfolio, mm -hmm. then we will bump your allocation number up a bottle or so. There's no way that that information is not known. But they usually stay within companies, correct? It, yeah. It doesn't change... You can't go cross houses is what they call them right. or suppliers if, or, or distributors is what it actually is. Right. I didn't mean to say suppliers, distributor. And, and so ha, is there some states that do that? I don't know. I'm referring to my market and Georgia. So right. I can't tell you anything that's going on outside of my market in this area of Georgia. Yeah, especially in Evans. So. Especially in Evans, yeah. yeah. Um, and so there is incentivized. So it's kind of like this. If you buy uh, 15 cases of this brand, then it entitles you as an incentive, we'll send you an extra three pack or six pack or two bottles of this harder to get, or some people refer to as rare bourbon right. that everybody's after. And so then what you start to see out there in the, if you want to call it the liquor sales, you'll start seeing people um, doing bundle packages. Okay. And so I've seen it several times while going through different states, uh, but uh, Atlanta's a big one uh, city-wise as far as a bundle. Like you go to that store and it says, you can buy this bottle at this price, so it might be retail, right. not seventeen ninety two, but what it might be is you have to buy a seventeen ninety two plus a flat boat to get yeah. a this. And, I, and that, insert this. It could be a Blanton. It could be a... Eagle Rare, it could be a Taylor. There's no, there's, it's whatever that store has decided to make that bundle. The suppliers and the distributors cannot tell the retailers in Georgia what to bundle, what not to bundle. They can't say anything. Right. It is literally on that store as to what they want to do. So if I wanted to tomorrow start saying, well, in order to buy, I don't know, insert bourbon here, Eagle Rare, whatever, then you have to purchase this also. Yeah. That's up to me. The distributor has nothing to do with that. They can't say anything about it. It's Georgia is a, we get to do what we want right. pricing wise with the exception of you can't go below cost. So it is definitely things that are attached to other items that may increase your chances of getting brands that everybody's after. And, and so I've mentioned this like three times now. So let's go ahead and keep saying the word Blanton. Well, everybody, we get so many phone calls. We get so many messages. We, right. Everybody wants Blanton. Well, that's fine. It's a fine bourbon. There's nothing wrong with it everybody's after it. They want the little horse. And so if you do well with this brand, that means you have done well with several other brands right. that boost your allocation in that, in that standpoint. And so to answer that question without going in too much, you know, there is definitely some, what we're going to call incentivized selling. So cheers, yeah, cheers to that. Thank you for that question. That's a good question. It's just, Really right. well balanced. It's so earthy, yeah, but in the, in the standpoint of it will stand up in a cocktail. You can do anything with it. Tell you what, it opens up a lot. You it add does. Some, add some ice. See, to I it. do. I don't know if you guys noticed that we did two small ice cubes. Uh, I used to do uh, a standard, pretty decent pour, and then one half moon shape from the Samsung fridges. Yeah. That, that, the, that the terrible <laughs> fridges. The ice cubes are not good, but that was the amount of ice that I would prefer it with. But this is how I standardly drink small batch from 1792, and I've always been. A, a small batch fan. Matter of fact, a little fun fact, actually, 1792 Ridgemont Reserve, eight year, eight year, was the very first half gallon of bourbon I ever consumed. Man, and so very nice. That's a little interesting fun fact about you know that yeah. brand. Very nice. So what you you were talking about uh, Blantons. Yes. So how how what does it do? So you got your hunters out there and you got your local people. How is that? How is that really helping the local scene? And that you know, when you have everybody coming around, ah, uh, the hunters and the so there's hoarders what and, we call yeah. There's hoarders, there's hunters, and there's locals. And the locals can hunt too because yes, we hunt. Can. Oh yeah, we hunt bourbon also, just like anybody else does. We do. We just usually hunt in Kentucky. I'm not saying that we're always successful, but that's no. what we do. It's what I prefer. And Atlanta is a really big city, so I've gotten lucky several times in the Gwinnett County area. Right. And other areas around that entire surrounding area, just like we have a surrounding area for Evans. Yeah. But so hunters that are coming from out of town, I have a business model that might be different than others. And so I'm more geared towards our local area. I want to do the best I can for our local, you know, people that support the store and or customers instead of local people, but local customers that support the store. And so 
you have higher odds of if you support a store of getting that of hard to find because we're trying to get away from rare right now so yeah. we don't need to be calling eagle rare rare it's just no. hard to find it's hard to find. yeah and so i'm trying not to say rare so it's hard to find so if you're going after those hard to find bottles it is easier to get them if you regularly support one store or two stores or three but if you constantly are known if you know first name keep up with what's going on then there's a good chance that it's easier to find it just based off of relationships yeah you know so that, that's key in this industry. And so when there's hunters coming through the area from out of state or out of city or just not on the regulars, like say they come in once in a once in a while, there's a good chance that they, if they do have that bottle on the shelf, that store is probably going to charge more for it because that person doesn't support the store. Right. They're just after that one hard to find bottle. And so they're probably going to gouge on it. I don't gouge on my things. That's my choice. I could, but I don't. Right. I haven't. That's just, I'm a... Uh, almost along the lines of a, a purist when it comes to the harder to find things. I'm here to open and enjoy them with friends, family, or whoever. And it's a lot easier to rip that Band-Aid off or pop the cork yeah. if I only spent $69 instead of $725. Well, and I like it also because not only that, but you can you can share it with friends and everything. I mean, if you take something and instead of paying, you know, anywhere between 20 to 30, 40% more than our, even three or four times as much as a bottle should be worth, you're not really going to want to, you're going to want to kind of hoard that yeah. and keep it to yourself and not share it with anybody else. So I'm glad which you... I, which is what I like to do. If I got a bottle, if I have a bottle, I want to open it up and share it with friends and family. I'm way too curious. I have to know what it tastes like. Yeah. And, and so that I'm glad you said the hoarder part and make it. So it's not necessarily hoarding is a bad thing, No. but if you've spent and invested a lot of your hard earned money and you work hard for it, you spend it the way you want to. If you've spent a whole bunch of it, it, it's going to make you second guess it sometimes right. of opening it. And so sometimes it's hard to open that bottle if you've invested a good bit of money in it knowing what the retail actually is. Yeah. And so it's not a hoarding in a bad sense. It's yeah. a hoarding in a, I've got these nice bottles. They look pretty. Yes. They look good. I'm afraid to open them. Well, and if I, I, I mean, I'll hoard a bottle. It's because it's more, for me, it's a rare one, hard for me to find. But I'll hoard it to, I'm waiting for a time, what I think is a good time to open it. You know, like a birthday yeah. or something like a that. A memorable moment. Yes. And so that's one of the things that, you know, if, if you were to look at my collection, there are empty bottles hanging upside down in, in, in the wine rack in the kitchen. Because my thing is, they have memories behind them. Right. So my those are rare bottles. Yeah. And those rare bottles have been opened and they're all empty. I probably drank maybe a quarter out of most of them. I shared most of them because it was the experience. But I have the memory of each one. Right. And so were every single one of them allocated? Yes, they were extremely allocated. So then there's like different levels of allocation. And, and so I could see this being a higher allocation, meaning, eh, you know, it's available. They're still producing enough we can get it. Buffalo Trace is available. They're still producing enough we can get it. But then there's the, whoa, allocated. Like, okay, so now we're only getting maybe a case or a couple bottles a month. Like a, yeah. That's harder to get. Right. Then you got the, oh, super allocated. Like you get maybe one case a year. Okay. All right. Like then you've got extremely allocated. And we're talking about bottles a year. B-tax, that type of stuff. Things right? like that. Now, this is our market. Keep in mind, you go to a bigger city, There's all more. bets are off. Right. We're not talking about Chicago, Atlanta. That's that's different. We're, we're literally talking about our market. Right here and, and so I could break it down and, and you know do generalities because... I do know the information, cases, and things like that that are distributed amongst the 1,200 stores in the area. But we're not going to talk about that. Right. It has nothing to do with that. I'm not going to. No. I'm not going to, you know, kick myself when I don't need to be kicked. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so that's kind of the you know allocation breakdown, hoarding breakdown, and a little bit of hunting. So I, am I for hunting? Yes. Oh, I love to hunt. I love to hunt. I just I don't get as much time as other people like to hunt because there are people that hunt constantly. Yeah, it's it's fun to go out. It's what I really like is going to some of the other stores, just seeing what they have, seeing the layout, the stores, and everything. Even if you don't find something, and then usually if, even if I'm there, I try to I try to purchase, purchase something because guess what? I'm a big believer in if you go into a store, purchase something no matter what. I don't care if it's a beer or something like that. That's just me. Yeah, I personally, that's just me. There's a lot of people that do that, which we appreciate because. There, I'm not saying that our store is unknown, but there is some people that do know about our store that come in from out of town, and they do come in. And then we ask them, you know, what you're looking for, and then they start rattling off the so we're, eight brands. And then, so. of course, we don't have them, or we do have them, and then they're excited. But a lot of them, what we found in, in the hunting in this last year, we've gotten more people to come in the store than we've ever had since 2012 and turn right back around with nothing. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. I'm not telling you you have to shop every time. No. But it's very cool if you do go ahead and buy something. You don't have to. Because I'm not saying you just need to go waste money and buying alcohol that you may or may not consume. 
but that you can tell the the ones that are hunting based off of what was told to them on social media they, yeah. versus you know they truly used to drink it and are looking to consume it and things like that like they may have never had it but we've had eagle rare several times right and i have to go hunt for eagle rare yes yeah, yeah. And, and so you know it, there was somebody that posted earlier on a on a on a forum it wasn't really a forum as a site and talking about a specific you know half gallon size that the roommate drank and they're trying to you know replace it good luck that's going to be hard yeah because that is not going to be an easy one to easy one to find and yeah, I want one too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, the thing, what I think is crazy is, uh, what I like is, I usually, if I go to another store, beers are what I go to because it's it's awesome, to, especially if you're out of, you know, in North Carolina, South Carolina, to see the local breweries oh. and everything that they have there, get the IPAs. That's why, even North if Carolina I... North Carolina IPAs. Yeah, yeah, if I just stop in one, go there. And so, you've mentioned social media sites. Okay. So, I'm curious, do you have, are, are, so, do you think a lot of the hunters now are using the social media sites to... No, you know, there people are posting, hey, found this here or found this over here. Oh man, like let me tell you, that is a great great example and question as to what's going on. So now you have these sites. It used to be more challenging. It's like right. you had to actually do the work, drive around, and then go ask for this product, or hopefully you find it on the shelf at a price that you're willing to pay, whatever that price is. But now there's all these bourbon sites. Right. And so there's groups, they're private or they're not, or they're public, which is the opposite of private. So that was just, you know, uncut, unfiltered. unfiltered. Yeah. And so obviously you're in these groups and then somebody will take a photo, which we'll get to the rest of the photo taking in a second. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So they'll take a photo and they'll go, let me snap out my flip phone here and take a picture. Bang. Bingo bongo. Found it. And then they post it, say, found it at this shop. There's six more on the shelf. Right. And then you get this influx of people that go rush down there. So there's an instance that happened here locally, and I'm on these sites, and I like the sites because it's a good information for tool, like a good tool for information. Right. And, you know, I like to know what's out there too because I'm not above the hunting, but I just don't know if it's going to be a positive or negative in the future moving down the road for posting what other stores have or don't have. Right. Some store owners are real sensitive and they don't want you to do that. Some don't care. Yeah. But it's funny because I know a lot of the store owners in the area and the little bit of communications that we do have, somebody posted a, a photo of a bottle. I won't say what the bottle was. And then the next thing you know, their four bottles that they had were completely wiped out. Just gone. Gone instantly, which is fine. They're there to sell them. Right. And then they reached out to the distributor and the salesperson. And, you know, when we talked and they're like, I've never had that many people ask for that bottle in 10 years. Yeah. And it's like, nobody knew that bottle was there until somebody posted it on social media. Yeah. And then it created this huge run over to that store. And of course, all you had 20 to 25 people showing up. Only four bottles were available, but they didn't know if they were there just in case. So I can't say that it's gonna be a negative or a positive with that. Used to be back in the day, if we were going through a store in Kentucky and they had, oh, we'll just throw this out there because we're gonna throw a big name out there. Whatever winkle you can think of and your, your favorite. So right. whatever you guys prefer to drink, Winkle wise, just pretend that you walk into a store and you find that bottle and you're like, wow, they have two of them. Oh yeah. So I pick up the phone and I call Charles and I say, Charles, mm -hmm. they've got two. Do you want me to mule you one back? Right. And you say yes or no. I didn't put it on social media. No. I just bought that bottle or I for didn't buy the bottle for a friend. Yep. And then I went on about my day. Exactly. And then you got the bottle, you paid me back, yeah. you know, and that's how that worked. Now it's different. Now you have a lot of tools that can locate where things are. There's even apps that tell you where Weller Antique is in Ohio. That, did not know that. Did not know that. And see, what I think is, I think it's a good tool, but I think it, it's just like everything with social media nowadays. There's pluses and minuses to both of it. The thing, the one aspect of it I'm a little bit not fond of is the <laughs> idea of taking away people coming in out, outside of the local area can be taking away those bottles for the local people. That's just me personally. I mean, I, I hunt, and I go take away bottles from local people in Kentucky, wherever I go hunting. But that's just, you know, just kind of where I'm at. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of like a fence sitting. It's like, I do want customers to come in, right? and I do want the local customers to be happy, but let's boil it down to this. There's no possible way for me to make every single person that walks no. in that door happy nope. when it comes to allocated bottles right. or rare bottles. And so we, I do the best that I can. I can't speak for everybody else's in the store that they have. But it can be, that's a good question. I'm glad that uh, this was yeah. a this was a question that was sent to us. Yes, it was. And so I'm glad it was a good question. I'm not saying that we answered it the way they wanted to hear it, but that's kind of our thoughts, opinions yeah. on it. 
Like I said, we're just bantering about it's, it. It's you know. there, There's pluses and minuses to everything. To everything. Everything, yeah. honestly. But now the famous shot that everybody gets when they go out there. Oh, and they tell get me the, we're going to talk about this. Oh, one. yeah, we are. We are. So you go out there, you find the bottle. You're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, get out to the car. Or not even to the car yet. You get old crotch shot with the bottle. And this was sent to us also, as we should talk about for yes. crush So I'm just going to have Charles pull down a random bottle just anywhere. Just anywhere? I've got, we got some bottles near us. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Yeah. There's there's some bottles near us. We'll just, just go with one that's one that's open. One that's open. Okay, and so we'll it, go with one that's open. Yep. All right, so holy score. Look at this. I got this. And bam, the crotch shot. Yep. And so you either hold it like this and you do a crotch shot, or you're in your car, which you guys can't see this, and then you do it while you're sitting down. So the only thing that I can estimate is why people do the crotch shot is because it originally started with people are excited about finding oh, yeah. the bottle. Yeah. Then they were sitting in their car after they got the bottle at the store. And so if you're sitting, yeah. you're sitting you have your steering wheel. A lot of those crotch shots came from where the bottle was propped in your lap yeah. and it was propped on the steering wheel. And so this goes back years ago. And you take the photo and you send it to your buddy like, hey, look what I just found. Hell, we're going to open this or we're not going to open this. We're going to drink this or we're not going to drink it. We're going to enjoy this tonight, something like that. And then it's kind of morphed into this whole phenomena on social media. And the crotch shot is a legitimate thing. So it is. if you find the most awesome bottle, you have to, you have to take a crotch shot and post it like, look but, what I found. But you have to send it to all your friends first before you post it, just just to get the reaction. Just to get the reaction. <laughs> and then, of course, you'll probably get a lot of you know, feedback in a negative way. Possibly. And, and then yeah. it's also, what's funny recently is somebody did a crotch shot, I guess, and depending on how their hand was or something, there was a really nice watch. Ah, Ah, so now people were doing the crotch shot specifically trying, trying with a really nice watch in there. So it's like, okay, that guy's got a really nice uh, watch. Let me get Who my, cares about the bourbon? He's got a twenty thousand dollar watch. Let me get my iPhone three in there. No, yeah, no, or, yeah, my yeah. Apple Watch. Apple 3. Watch. There we yeah. go. So uncut unfiltered. So yes, uh, yeah, yeah, uncut unfiltered. Yeah. So that that is that's um, somebody asked that question too about you know this that pertains to the allocated bottles. It does. And do I agree that every time that somebody finds. Uh, a lot of the Sazerac brands or, uh, you know, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Those mm -hmm. are released like three times a year in our market. There's an A, B, C, yep. which I think everybody knows about that. You got the A release, the B release, and the C release. Each one's a different proof right. from a different batch that they release. And so Heaven Hill releases those three times a year. So they're not necessarily rare, but they are very allocated. And they are not the easiest to find in all markets. And to go on with allocations, if you, you know, let me. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. So different markets exist throughout the country. Yes. Some suppliers only supply 15, 20 states. Well, okay. we all know there's 50 states. And then there's also the fact that some of them aren't on the mainland. You know, you've got yeah. Alaska and Hawaii, Hawaii way out there. Right. So they might not get any of those. So this could segue into allocations and then rare bottles mm -hmm. via the secondary market. Right. But that can be a different topic at a different time, yeah, I think but it, it does pertain to allocated bottles. But those bourbon states, if you want to call it that, so you have other states that don't get anything, and then some states get a lot more allocation. So let's just make up numbers. Let's just pretend for a moment that we get 21 cases of this. I did 21 because that's my number. There you go. And so 21 cases of this throughout the entire year. Well, you know, let's pick a random state. Montana might not even get this. No. I don't know if they do or not. They might not, but they might only get one case because it's not a bourbon market. Right. What we do know is that allocations are moving out west. Really? And so you're now getting bourbon markets that are now creating themselves a little area and some in Washington and some in California. So that's really cool if you like the fact that you can get it out there. It's not cool if you're Georgia, which is a major consumption of bourbon since bourbon existed. Right and they had to do this three-tier system with distribution, now we're not getting as much because they're wanting to get an influence out there yep. in California. Just to grow it. Just, Just to, grow to grow it, yeah. So, one last question. Going to be one that you're going to probably have to dance around a little bit oh. on allocation. So I mean, Let gonna... me take a sip for that one. Cheers, everybody yeah. out there. Hope you're joining in and or hope you're watching and enjoying a poor wall watching. Yeah, yeah, definitely, guys. And again, hit the like button subscribe that way you know when we're uh, actually going to have drop more videos hopefully you guys like this one so far we're trying to keep these uh, to a certain time frame and then this is like i said part one of yeah. allocations of rare bottles this could go many parts yeah and we're yeah. gonna we're gonna have a part two coming out and then there's no telling how many more parts all depends on the questions honestly people please put a, put your questions out there in the comments we will try to get to as many of them as we possibly can and if we keep getting questions we'll revisit them and we'll, yeah. make, we'll make different and parts. if you guys want to know specific brands that are allocated that you didn't know right. or if you want to know what isn't that you want to be able to make sure you consume all the time that's fine so 
the, the you put your tap shoes on and we're have to see here who's, oh, all right. here whose go. decision it is to allocate and then are there any laws in that type of stuff that deal with allocation so whose decision is it to allocate so depending on what year you ask me that my question or my answer would change so at one point i could say it's definitely on the supplier but the supplier supplies the distributor the distributor then supplies the liquor store right so technically if you were to follow the system, it is on the distributor as to who gets what allocation. Okay. The supplier can have influence based off of supporting of their brands. If you're supporting their portfolio, then they're on the list. And then let's just say you have six bottles and you have 50 stores. Then they have to figure out who has the highest support for where those bottles go. Is there some rules being broken? All I can say is that this bourbon is good. Yep. <laughs> it's always a good bourbon. Isn't it is it? a good bourbon. I, mean, I really enjoy this bourbon. Yeah, it is. And, you can't go wrong with it. And, and so, if anybody had a question of what this bourbon tastes like, it is allocated, but it is available most of the time. Yes. Look for 1792. It's one of our go tos. It's, it's, yeah. And if you really want to know the answer to those questions, as far as any laws or whatever, I encourage you guys to Google it. Yes. Look it up. Go on Department of Revenue and thing. You know, figure that out. That's not for me to really answer fully to the extent of my knowledge. Do I know the answer to that question? All I know is that this bourbon is good. Yeah, and that, again, that was one of the questions that we had, and we're going to try to answer these questions to the best of our ability, especially with him. I'm not in the I'm not in the industry. He is. So that's not true. You're in the well, industry. I am in the industry. You're behind the scenes. Yes, the I'm behind yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, but I don't have to deal directly with him like you do. Right. So. And, and so again, I'm not going to kick myself, and I don't no. need to be kicked. Is there some rules being bent or broken? That is up to you guys to determine. If you guys decide to look it up or Google it or figure it out. Yeah. And if you guys want to have a separate conversation in the store, stop by. We can talk about it. We can figure out what I have to jump through hoops, if there are hoops to be jumped through. Do some more tap dancing. Yeah, do more tap dancing. <laughs> but so ultimately, to answer that question, to you know, finalize it, it is up to the distributor because they're the ones that control the bottle. There is influence if there needs to be influence from the suppliers to where they think they should right. have those bottles be delivered to. But the distributor is the ultimate person that says, this bottle is going to go to you because they're the ones with a salesperson in the computer that says, send to this account. Understand. Not necessarily the sales rep, but literally the distributor. It could be a sales manager. It could be the manager's manager. Any part, any know, part any of it. Right. right. But the supplier can have influence to certain things. This does happen. It does occur. Is it supposed to occur? That's up for you guys to determine when you look up those rules and then in your interpretation of those rules. Right. And so I hope that answered that question as far as that. It's a good question. It's a tough question. It's a tough question. Yeah, yeah. It's a good question. I think it's one that's on a lot of people's minds and it's one that I've had to go look up myself to right. get my understanding of it too. Yep. I have my opinions, but again, I'm going to keep, he's answered it eloquently. I'm going to keep my opinions to myself and we're going to, I well, have another, let me, let me pause that real yep, quick. Here. One, one, real, to answer that a little bit more, the way I probably could have taken that question is, is why is it fair that this account gets more allocation than you get? So I went a little bit more technical. You did. So now I'm going to back off and go, well, let me tell you this. To be honest with you, it's hard for Augusta to compete with Atlanta because we're in the Augusta market. Atlanta has 95%, right. pretty much 95% of the population in the state of Georgia. Very much. Which so. could dictate 95% of the sales of Georgia. So why would anybody want to send any bottles outside of where all their stuff is coming from? Because they're the ones supporting everything because they have all the people. So therefore, the allocation should go there. So if the question was meant, like, why is it not fair that you were doing this before everybody else was doing this and it was popular and my local hometown store doesn't get it and he was always cool and now it's always going to these bigger accounts, it could be based off of sales. Sales. Yeah. And it, again, back to supporting the portfolio from the actual supplier. Yep. So we'll, support, support the store. The store is going to help you support the brands that they think is going to be best. Yes. Support your local stores. That's another thing. They can let you know what we have to go through to right. make sure you get what you're after. And we can't guarantee anything in the allocated world. Right. Yeah. So, sorry to interrupt. Go no, ahead. you're good. So this is allocated, allocated right? Allocated, yeah. And we're almost done. I'm I know. Finish on this. I know. So my, my other thing is, so a lot of people I think are going to go, okay, well, we've said rare quite a few times in this video. We did say rare. So allocated. What's the difference between allocated and rare? Okay, so allocated and rare. So rare, obviously, m very small amount exists. Maybe once a year release. Maybe when it was released, it was released so long ago that it doesn't exist now. Maybe it needs to be open and shared. And maybe it looks like this. There it is. So this is a 1993? Three. 
1993 Pre-Fire Heaven Hill Virgin Bourbon 101 15 year export to across the pond. Yes, it is. That would be a rare bottle mm -hmm. because that bottle you can't go get anymore. No. Was it rare when it existed? Not at no. all. Wasn't even allocated. No, and it's still out there. Yep. Not and this one. Not though. this one. No. Virgin Bourbon still exists. If I remember correctly, that is a North Carolina and Alabama release. If you guys like Heaven Hill products, by all means, there's an allocation of it right. that is sent to those states. And you can get Virgin Bourbon 101. It used to be a seven year. They took that off and now it's not, but it's fine. It's good Heaven Hill stuff regardless. So I said we crack into this. I, I'd love to. I mean, let's talk about some rare whiskey. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's interesting to hear people say rare quite a bit and it's not really rare more long. It's just hard to find. Hard to find. Hard to find because yeah. this you can't find anymore. You cannot find this. This does not exist anymore. We were lucky enough to come across this and now we get to try it. Yes. And and, and so it's this is sweet goodness. This is, yeah, this is <laughs> incredible. Oh man. I know. It's, it's just the old dusties just don't exist like they used to because now they're found. Look at the color on that bad boy. There and I, go, I think I think another rare one. I think everybody was everybody's heard about Stitzelweller use. Oh yeah, Stitzel yeah. Pure Stitzel. If you've got something pure Stitzelweller, that's that's got some age to it. Uh, that's you know that that could be pretty rare. Yeah. That's a. About to say, man, I think so. That's good. So Cheers. look at the color on that. Cheers, wow. and you know, thanks for uh, drinking some allocated and rare bourbon with oh, me, yeah, Charles. Man. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I yeah, this rare one, this was a oh man, this was a nose. find. This was such a find. Yeah, we're. I was just glad to be a part of this. Yeah, this one. I'll tell you right now. So this is rare. This is allocated. Right. There's a bunch of other allocated bourbons out Not there. Not rare. Sometimes hard to find. Sometimes hard to find. Depends on what time of the month it is. Right. Which depends on the delivery. And so you might only get that one delivery. But this right here, finding pre-fire Heaven Hill, which if you guys aren't familiar with what that is, 1996, there's a big fire. You guys can look that up. There's all kind of videos on YouTube. Um, hopefully you guys are looking at our videos on YouTube and then you look at that video on YouTube to figure out what pre-fire means. So it's prior to 1996 when they had a catastrophic fire, which was some of the most amazing videos I've yeah. seen. Yeah. yeah. It's intense when they burnt down oh, so much stuff. And then, so they bounce back. Heaven Hill bounced back, you know. And they make some Yeah, they great make great, product. great things. I'll tell you what, right there, I love this. I, I love the oak flavor the on this. The nose on that. The nose, is, the nose is phenomenal. So what's really cool about this one is it's 101 proof. Yes. Where a lot of the pre-fire stuff is 86. 86, yeah. yes. And, and so just randomly, I'll pick to my right and find another one of Heaven Hill pre-fire pre -fire. juice. This is also imported across the pond. Across the pond. And under a different name called Kentucky Deluxe. And still an amazing product. Yeah. It's, it, it's it, great. Is, it is phenomenal how the pre-fires are. Yes. I mean, the pre-fires are just. Yeah. If you guys get a chance to try pre-fire, by all means, I would definitely look into that. It's very good. So one of the most rele uh, recent releases is going to be, um, what do, do the math, 1996 plus 23. Is that 2019? Yeah. So 2019's Elijah Craig 23 year single barrel. That's okay. that's the last one that they did. Yep. And that's a pre fire because of '96. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you we could get technical and be like, depends on the distilling season. You know, what time of the year it was distilled versus when the fire was going on and that. Yeah, but it's let's not do that. Let's just give it credit where credit's due. More exactly. than likely, that's what it is. And you know what? I like I like seeing this. So I guess one last question I have for you on the rare side. Sure. I think one I, that could possibly well, show up. for part up, one. Yeah, for part one. Yeah. But that could possibly show up is, would you consider any of the Van Winkles rare? 100%. There's no way you cannot consider the Van Winkle line rare. And the only reason I say that is, is because Pure Stitzel Weller Van Winkle still exist. Right. That's super rare. That's super rare. And so if you've got that, that means you've been holding onto a bottle for a long time. <laughs> Just a little bit. And I think if the math is right, 1992 plus 23, is that, 19, is that 2014, 2015? I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> We're drinking bourbon. We're not I doing have math. To get my, I have to get my phone yeah. and uh, yeah. figure that one out. I should be able to do simple math since I do this on a regular basis. Well, yeah. But yeah. Anyhow, that's, it's going to peg around there. So. Uh, that's going to be the last of the pure Stitzel Weller for the 23. Right. And it, it backs off way from there. So like 2003, I think, is going to be it for the 10-year. Okay. You know, and then, 
you know, so you just keep doing the math from right. there. So yes, those I would consider, you know, really rare. Squat bottles are what oh, a lot yeah. of the Van Winkles came in. Yes. Those are rare because they don't exist anymore. Right. And a lot of people that bought them back then, the boom wasn't necessarily going on, so they were consuming them. Right. So the more product is consumed, the rarer it gets if you have yes. one hanging around. And so if we have one hanging around that's pre-fire, that means it didn't get consumed, somebody held on to it, it's automatically rare. Just because I guarantee you it's not like there's anybody out there producing this because you can't produce something no. that existed prior to 1996 which this one was 93 exactly no. yeah no. And so if you guys want to see some cool markings on there i'll just rotate the bottle around and then in the background not the background on the back panel is where it has the actual yeah uh, foreign letters well i'm thinking I, i'm it's thinking it's yeah. probably from japan it looks like it could be yeah. there's a lot japan was a huge mm -hmm. bourbon market for a lot of stuff to be sent to and a lot of brands were sent to them and so again we were lucky enough to get this. Yeah. It yeah. is not common. It's definitely rare. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely rare. Are there other rare bourbons? Yes, there is. There's plenty. And to go you know, back to the Van Winkle. So the numbers are produced in such small quantities each year. They are ramping up production if you follow what they're saying. And if you believe what they're saying, they're expanding constantly. Correct. And they're constantly building rick houses. They're putting possibly more bottles out each year. Right. Nobody knows the true number. That's not true. There are people that do know. Not we just me. don't. Yeah, it's not me. Yeah. And it's obviously going to be the people at the distillery. And then you had Pappy Gate, 2013. Rip. So that kind of put a damper on things. And then, so they are trying to put more out there because it's, it's, it's kind of sought after. Uh, just, 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 a little, just, like, a little just a little. Just a little sought after. I think everybody and their brother wants one, to be honest with you. Yeah, me. I don't think I've met anybody that didn't know the name, at least. Or you know, ever said, no, no, I don't want one of those here. Let me give you the right. bottle back. No. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've heard of people saying that they tried it and won their favorite, which nobody said it was the best. No. I like it. I but mean, it's really good. The thing is, is everybody has their own taste. Taste, exactly. Which we talked about that last exactly. time. Exactly. If you don't like it, you weren't. You don't have to like it. No. You know, it's not saying it's going to be for you. But I think it's really good. I'm not saying it's the best I've ever had, but it is very good. It is. Yeah. And I like some better than I do others. Right. And then each year they're slightly different because they're batches. Right. Yeah. And so I can say that. Are some batches more rare than others? Yeah, because. 2013, there was a whole Pappy Gate that went down. Right. If you have the ones that made it to your store and you have a 2013, just by default alone, I feel like those bottles would be worth more because they made it past what all that theft was. Exactly. And that's pretty unique in itself. It and so I would definitely call those rare. There are plenty of other rare bottles that do exist, and they are being produced today, but they're usually in low quantities because that's pretty much what rare equates to now if it's to be a new product. So let's just say they roll out a new 15-year. Heaven Hill produces a new 15-year. Yep. They're going to call it William Heaven Hill, more than likely, distillery only, and there's going to be a certain amount of run, which means there's X amount of bottles. Right. And that would be kind of a rare release from them. Right, yeah. They don't necessarily put rare on there because they've been doing William Heaven Hill every year. Every year. So if you look at it as it's done every year, is it rare, or is it just a rare release? I think it's, to me personally, I don't think it's rare because William Heaven Hill, you can get those. But it depends on which one you're getting. Then that makes it's it just rare. very hard to get them. Exactly. And you have to be at the distillery at the right moment, yes. the right time. Mm -hmm. They do do that. Or you just go to a nice little whiskey bar and uh, get you a pour of it if they have it on there, and you get to try it that way. This is true. So, Charles, let me ask you on this. Since yes. we're trying this awesome rare whiskey here, the color, the nose is amazing. Did you get a little bit from transitioning from this bottle to this bottle and that taste profile? If you guys try this, if you get a chance to, if you see it, now, my guess is going to be in a bourbon library somewhere, maybe Barstown Bourbon Company might yeah. have it because they got some, they they have their some library awesome is amazing. Yes. Yeah. Do you get almost a little bit of like a black tea note, like a little bit of tea, but a sweet tea almost? I do, I do get, and that's weird. I don't get that on a lot of stuff, but on the pre fire, sometimes I get an actual tea. Yes, I do get something, and I, I could not really put my, you know, put my finger on it, what it was, but no, I think you're exactly right. What I do to me, what I love about this, and I said it earlier, I love the finish on this. The mouthfeel on this is amazing. Oh, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's spot on. Yeah. yeah. But I love the oak finish on me. That's what I get on the finish for me is that yeah. oak. That it, oak it, it's a little drying. Yes. And it's that 101 proof with that older age, 15 year, but, that standard match that it did back then. And then it, it is a little dry, but it's that oak. Yes. I like it, but I get a little bit of tea. I do get that on the tip. Yes. yes. But if you were to, if I were to bring that bottle back out, that's like drinking brown sugar water candy. Yeah. Because that 86 or pre fire is completely different than the one which I really appreciate this one on one. But I'll tell you what, does it drink? I'll, let me let me ask you, does it drink like a one on one? No, it drinks about like an 80. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing. Yeah. But guys, honestly, 
wanted to say thank you again. Yep. And cheers, uh, cheers to you guys as cheers well. Cheers to you guys. Yes. Hopefully, 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 <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. I answered some questions. I appreciate the you know, questions they brought yeah. in. Right. And hopefully, Charles helped out, answered questions as well. We can't thank you guys enough. Um, no, please, guys. Again, just follow us. Hit the hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button down below. We've got another uh, we got another one part two going to be coming up here pretty That's soon. Right. Stay tuned for part Stay two. Stay tuned for it, and uh, look forward to uh, talking with you guys and talking some more bourbon and bantering about it. I'm gonna drink this. So cheers. Cheers.